better? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, so uh, hi-fi reads are transforming genomics, and the reason is because they have a unique quality of being both uh, very long in read length and highly accurate. And the accuracy, uh, you don't have to take my word for it. There was a study that was published by NIST and other technology providers, including folks at PacBio, uh, comparison the ability of, of different technologies to sequence a human reference genome. And the results of that showed uh, that hi-fi reads are particularly accurate, and they form a very tight band of accuracy and are in fact more accurate than uh, what has been previously thought as the gold standard of accuracy, which is Illumina. And so that's really having an impact on many areas of genomics. And what I'd like to focus on today is uh, applications that are relevant to infectious disease and understanding host pathogen dynamics. Starting off with uh, a topic which we have all spent a lot of time thinking about in recent years, uh, viral pathogens. Um, so I want to start off by sharing that PecBio is going to be releasing a new kit uh, for SARS-CoV-2 sequencing in early November. Uh, the kit is distinguished by its uh, simple workflow. In fact, it's much simpler than a lot of the Amplicon uh, dual reaction based methods that are out there because it does not use traditional uh, PCR. Uh, it has an add-only workflow, which makes it uh, less prone to pipetting errors and very easy to automate. And it has robust performance uh, because using this method, we're able to cover every position in the uh, viral genome many, many times, uh, which means it has increased robustness against variants as they arise. You can sequence anywhere from 24 to 386 samples in a, or 384 samples in a single run. Uh, and the results come back within 24 hours with only three hours of, of hands-on time. So definitely uh, stay tuned. Uh, there will be more uh, details, including about the exact nature and method of the assay as we get closer to the November release date. Uh, so, but you know, there are uh, many important applications for viral sequencing beyond uh, just high throughput surveillance. And I want to talk to you about a couple examples of how hi-fi reads can be used to really see viral genomes in high resolution. So one question many folks have is why do such small genomes need long reads? And the answer is because while um, an initial viral infection may come from just a single virion, uh, depending on the faithfulness of the replication of that virus, it can quickly evolve into a situation uh, where within the host, there are many, many different copies, each of which is slightly different from the other, and they exist in this cloud of related genomes called quasi-species. And it's impossible to resolve that quasi-species uh, using short reads. Um, but with long read hi-fi sequencing, you can sequence each individual member of that quasi-species uh, in full length and at high accuracy. And that allows you to do things like detect uh, variants as they arise, uh, look for things like drug escape or immune escape. Um, and these kinds of uh, information is very important for making uh, good public health decisions and also understanding booster needs or how um, you know, boosters might be required and whether they're going to be able to adequately address resistance as it evolves. So there's a great example of using this approach uh, published this past year by scientists at NIAID in the United States. Uh, so David Boritz and his colleagues, they used a very long amplicon of 6.1 KB in length uh, to sequence and entirely phase the entire sp spike gene as well as the E and M genes with very high reproducibility. And they used this to study pathogen dynamics uh, over the course uh, of a patient who was infected with SARS-CoV-2. And what you'll note is that as they followed a uh, viral load in this patient uh, in black and gray, initially the viral load was coming down, but then at day 15, there was a resurgence and that coincided with the appearance of a variance in, in this patient. And even more interestingly, uh, most of those variants were focused in the NTD domain of the spike pre uh, protein, which coincides with an epitope region, uh, the 4A8 region, which has been shown to be a critical recognition site uh, for neutralizing antibodies. And so really the question here is, uh, you know, long resequencing provided a real window into the complexity of host pathogen dynamics in real time. It can help us understand the mechanisms of immune escape. Uh, so here's a, another example from influenza. Uh, influenza, I know many of 
let's expect to come roaring back uh, this fall or maybe next fall as we move back towards a more normal world. Uh, and viral influenza is really the only other uh, viral pathogen that has been known to cause uh, a global pandemic. Um, and even outside of a pandemic, it causes uh, a lot of, of death and infections every year. Uh, there are a lot of uh, mutations that are already known to confer antiviral drug resistance. Uh, and influenza has such sloppy replication that it's even known that mutations can accumulate during van vaccine manufacture. So having uh, a bigger window into variation uh, in influenza is pretty important. And I think something that uh, will be um, you know, given a greater weight as we, as we move forward and out of the COVID-19 epidemic. So this is a super interesting example of research that was done at the University of Washington, uh, looking at the ability of influenza uh, to mutate. So in this study, uh, the researchers used an assay uh, where hi-fi reads were used to sequence the entire length of all end phase, all eight genes that are part of the influenza genome. If you look here, every row is a different cell that was infected in an in vitro assay. And then every um, column here uh, corresponds to a different uh, gene from the influenza genome. So what you can see is that even after just 10 hours of infection, every bar here, which is dark blue, has but more than one a viral copy inside that cell uh, that is distinct and has mutations in it. And the different types of variants that are uh, in each one of these genes is labeled either uh, as a yellow or a pink bar representing deletions and insertions or as orange dots and circles representing SMVs. Uh, so uh, the replication of influenza as we see here was so sloppy that after just 10 hours, only about a third of the cells contained wild type of virus. Uh, and so this is really um, an indication of the level uh, of resolution and detail that you can get about what's actually happening in real time during the infectious process. And data like this uh, can drive a lot more insights uh, into uh, critical issues in host pathogen dynamics. Moving on to another type of pathogen, um, I wanted to share again that we are having a, a, another release in November updating our microbial whole genome sequencing application. Uh, so starting in November, all the reagents that you need to do the sample prep will be available in one kit uh, and you'll be able to multiplex up to 96 microbes in a single round on the SQL 2E system. Uh, doubling what was possible before. Uh, and we, since we are migrating uh, this uh, application to HiFi, we've been able to reduce the insert size uh, since we can now uh, detect differences between those shorter fragments. And as such, we can get the same high quality of assembly with a much simpler uh, DNA extraction uh, and sample prep procedure. Um, so uh, look forward to, to that. Um, and again, with uh, more details as we get closer to the release date. So um, one of the key uh, questions that uh, folks want to understand when sequencing uh, bacterial pathogens is, of course, the spread of antimicrobial resistance. And in fact, this is a huge uh, public health concern. And it was really the predominant public health concern uh, before the most recent SARS-CoV-2 outbreak. And I think, again, this is an area to which we are going to be returning our attention as this pandemic uh, gets more under control. Uh, and PacBio, uh, sequencing is already recognized as a critical tool for surveillance of this kind. Uh, there is a, a hospital consortium in the Boston area that uses PAC bio-sequencing in order to generate high quality references uh, for any novel bacterial strains that come into the hospital system. And why is that so important? Uh, so much like with the virus, um, bacteria uh, respect no international boundaries. And so even though in North America, uh, many types of beta-lactam carbapenem resistance are not yet common, these are uh, cycling uh, in as they spread uh, across the globe. And there is a strong desire on the part of the CDC uh, to track this so that they can have situation awareness and make appropriate public health decisions. Right? And so in this particular study, uh, the folks at, the, um, at, at Harvard and w uh, Women's Brigham Hospital uh, were able to detect uh, several classes uh, of uh, beta-lactam carbapenem resistant microbes that are not commonly seen. Uh, and the first thing they noted is that all of these strains are, are quite different to the extent that they 
uh, believe that these are appearing sporadically in the hospital system as opposed to being spread within the hospital system uh, as, a par as a consequence of hospital acquired infections. So when they sequenced with this higher resolution method and get complete assemblies, what they found is that all of the NDM bitum that laftamase containing microbes contained a common, a common cassette here. And this cassette can appear in a number of different plasmid backbones, or in one case, it appears inside the bacterial chromosome. And this is important to understand because different vectors uh, can be more easily passed to other new strains than others. And if you look at this chart to the left, you'll see across the X axis that there are a range of different potential hosts. And the study authors uh, did an experiment to see whether these plasmids can be transmitted from the original host into each of these. And so what you'll note is that the plasmid backbone in blue uh, was much more able to transmit to, to a wide range of bacterial hosts as opposed to uh, the plasmid backbones here in red and in gray. And so having this kind of high resolution information is really uh, helpful because it gives public health uh, scientists a much less filtered and comprehensive view of what's going on uh, on the ground in terms of AMR resistance and what kinds of measures need to be taken uh, in order to reduce the spread of these. So one last example that I will talk about quickly is metagenomics. Uh, so metagenomics can uh, pertain to a range of different applications. And what I'm gonna talk about today is full length 16S sequencing, which is being used more and more in the public health field uh, to do bacterial surveillance. PacBio works with Shoreline Biome, a third party partner to provide full length sequencing of the 16S gene. And the real advantage of using these full length um, method is that you can see uh, increased resolution of bacteria rather than uh, focusing only on partial 16S sequencing. And so here's an example of that. We worked with some collaborators at Shilta Therapeutics who were interested in using 16S sequencing as part of a clinical trial that they were piloting. And what they saw is that if they compared a uh, short read Illumina sequencing of V3V4 uh, versus a relatively uh, fewer reads from uh, PacBio strain ID sequencing, um, they were able uh, to get uh, much uh, more of these reads assigned to a lower taxonomy level. And in fact, only strain ID was able to assign any fraction of the reads uh, to strain level assignment here. And so really it's a difference in resolution that's very important because as we all know, bacteria can be from the same clad but have very different impacts on the host. So here's one example of a, uh, of a study uh, exploring uh, the um, occurrence of of blooms, E. coli blooms in hospitalized cancer patients. Uh, so the issue here is that when you do 16S sequencing of these patients, typically anything uh, that is in the E. coli family, it gets labeled simply as Escherichia shigella. And that's just not informative enough to uh, make uh, decisions about patient health. However, if you use the strain ID kit, you'll see uh, that the strain ID kit is able to resolve um, all of these uh, different E. coli samples to much lower a level of resolution. And in this particular case here, this patient had an E. coli bloom that was dominated by UMN026. And that is significant because it's a close representative uh, of a recently emerged clonal group A, which has been seen to cause drug resistant UTIs and other extra, extra intestinal infections. So um, I think I've used up all my time. Uh, and so I wanted to thank you for listening and just leave you uh, with the, the concluding thought uh, that PacBio HiFi sequencing is allowing us to push through long-standing barriers in the genomics uh, of microbiology. Uh, and our unique strengths of read length plus high accuracy offers unique advantages for whether you're sequencing isolates or complex samples like viral or metagenome samples. Thanks so much.